In 1860, in the Bois de Boulogne, in Paris, was the house of Claude Mercadé, one of the richest men in town. I am Claude Mercadé. I live with my beloved wife and my beautiful daughter in an atmosphere of serene dignity. My well-trained servants keep my house in excellent order. My butler is, of course, English, as he should be, which affords my daughter an excellent opportunity of studying the art in manners. My furniture, as you can see, is of exquisite taste, modern, here and there, an antique piece of rare beauty, like only a man of great wealth can afford. to pick up the furniture, the silver, etc. Just a moment, my good fellow. I'm not your good fellow. You yes, sir? Yeah. What is going on here? It's the bailiff. Oh, well, I did not expect you so soon, my good man. You are Claude Mercade? Unless my good name has been attached to. Mm -hmm. By orders of municipal court district D, Paris, France. All belongings and personal property of one Lord Mercadé, are hereby confiscated. Confiscated? <laughs> to satisfy the government's claim of 4,836 francs huh? and 26 centimes in taxes long past due. Mm. Everything has been stand. Take it away. Uh, uh, handle the pieces carefully now. And where's the silver? Uh, where is the silver? In the pawn shop. Everything goes. Only your bed. And the bed of your wife. You may keep. Now wait, wait, wait. Wait. I shall send for my bankers. You will have your money in full. I'll sleep on the floor. What is it, Justin? Oh, for me? Uh, open it. <laughs> nice people, my friends. Read it, read it, read it. Dear Mr. Mercaday, unless you pay us the money you owe us by this afternoon, we shall send you to a debtor's prison and sell your house. Signed, Pierquin, Goulard, and Violet. Always. Well, what can we do now, sir? Uh, I need time. Uh, uh, sir! If you could wait just a little while, hmm? <laughs> the government is interested uh, in the present, not the future. Uh -huh. Oh! Now, now, see what you have done. Mm, mm, mm. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up! Government property. That is a priceless antique. Those are the kind of things that money can never replace. But I am afraid you will have to make good its 3,000 francs Three. value anyway. Yes. 3,000 francs? Mm -hmm. Monsieur, I don't understand. I didn't have one drop this morning. And even if I had, I'd never drop things. Well, it's obvious that you did. But I might be tempted to overlook your carelessness. Supposing we discuss this while we have breakfast, huh? While your men wait outside for future instruction. Hmm? Therese? Three thousand francs. But I've already had my breakfast. Well, then you shall have another. Oh, Therese? This is the bailiff. Bailiff, this is Therese. My friend here is hungry. I want you to prepare him a wonderful breakfast. Get him eggs and sausages but and... Monsieur. Yeah, but monsieur. Uh, later, later, later. <clears throat> Come, my friend. Claude? Claude, is anything wrong? Hmm. 
Who is that? That is the bailiff, my dear. He has come to remove our furniture and our silver. But our silver is gone. Uh, yes, well, it'll be back today. We owe taxes, you know. The best thing would be to pay them. Uh, it, yes, that would be the best. Mm -hmm. Monsieur, I must talk to you. Not now, Virginie. We are very busy now. I cannot prepare the gentleman's breakfast. You cannot? Why? Is it your salary that you are worrying about? It's eggs. Eggs? That is not. No sausage. I'm no. sorry, darling, but the merchants, sir. Uh, oh, uh, the merchants, too. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. Well, you go ahead, Virginie, and don't worry. We will take care of it. What will we do? Hmm. Pauline, there is only one thing we can do. We will hold a reception here at 12 o'clock. For the bailiff? No, 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 no. For the Comte de la Brive. But who is the Count de la Brive? You remember, he sat in the box next to us at the opera. He was very much interested in Julie. In fact, he expressed the desire to marry Julie. Julie married to a Count? Mm hmm And the richest man in town. Justin! That would make her a Countess. Yes, it would make her a very rich countess. It would make her very happy, and it would make me very solvent. <laughs> oh, Justin, go around the corner to the house of the Count de la Brie. Tell him we will expect him here for a reception at 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock, mind you. And then you round up as many of my creditors as you can and bring them here. Your creditors? Yes, yes, yes. Tell them anything, only bring them here. First, give me my house jacket. But, Claude, this is impossible. We can't give a reception. We have no dresses, no food. Why, even the silver has been pawned. Not too loud. Your friend, Madame Goulard, will lend you her silver. Madame Goulard? <laughs> yeah, now you run up and get Julie. I must speak with her right away. But what if she... And then you get everything prepared for the luncheon. You see, we want to have a fine luncheon. We want soup and fish and pheasant and champagne. But... I want everything to be perfect. And then you send word to your dressmakers and tell them to deliver the dresses you ordered here last month. But Louis won't leave them without the cash, and neither will the merchants leave us the food. Well, naturally, I will pay them on delivery. With what? With what? <laughs> yeah, with money, of course. But you have no money. No, 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 but my creditors have. They will lend it to me. They are more interested than we are for Julie to marry the Count. <laughs> Poor creditors. <laughs> uh, once they open their purses, they are like gamblers and must continue throwing good money after bad. Now you run along and get Julie, and meanwhile I will entertain our guest. Yes, the bailiff. Bailiff, run along. Bailiff. Ah, my friend, I'm sorry to keep you waiting. You must be starved. Huh? I'm not hungry, Monsieur. Ah, but I am. My cook tells me that the eggs are a day old. I have sent her to the market for fresh ones. That will take a long time, Monsieur. And I've strict orders. Uh, I'd rather lose 3,000 francs than my job. Now, now, wait, wait. You are a good fellow. I am not going to have you pay for that antique you broke. Now, I have lost more in my life, huh? <laughs> monsieur. Oh, monsieur. For a man who owes money, you are the greatest that I ever lived. Perhaps I, I better get back to work. No, 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 no. After such a shock, you need perhaps a little relaxation, huh? An aperitif, perhaps. Ah. Uh, uh, aperitif? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be polite to say no. Yeah, well, then don't say it. <laughs> I hope you will find my wine to your taste. It's Bordeaux, 1812. Uh, 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 <coughs> it's real cold. Yes, yes, Napoleon brought it all the way from Russia. Sit down, sit down, sit down. I know you will like it. I drink it all the time myself. That's what And here we are. Well, your health, monsieur. Toujours, monsieur Mercadé. Well, I have served as a cook in a dozen houses, but this family beats them all. I'm not a cook. I'm an actress. The small creditor comes to this door. He asked for monsieur. I said, monsieur! It was a great surprise. I said, you do not know that this morning he left the lion. The lion? To close a big deal and had more money than he ever had before. A coal mine, they say. The stairs in hot water this time. Ah. I've seen Monsieur handle these matters before. And I tell you, the man's a genius. If he's a genius, why doesn't he pay us our back wages? He will as soon as Godot comes back. Ah, Godot. He ran away with Mercadet's cash box. I say a man who runs away with another man's money would be a fool to come back. I and knew a man. Monsieur says Godot wrote him from America, then he feels badly about it. And he will come back if he can make good. Oh, but... Go see what he wants. You, uh... You still 
feel that you should carry out your orders, hmm? It's my very unfortunate duty. Ah, ah. Well, I understand. I understand. Yes. Well, that's good. Let's have another one. Yes. <laughs> You rang me, sir? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Therese, this is the bailiff. Bailiff, it's you. Oh, you met Hello. me before, yes. Therese, I want you to sit here and entertain our guest. But, monsieur, I Yeah, that's all right. He's a good fellow. <laughs> you will excuse me now. I will wait for my credit... Uh, <coughs> my banker. Huh? Yes, be very nice to her. She comes of a good family. Thank you, monsieur. Something... Yes, Papa? Uh, it seems, Julie... Something wrong, Papa? Mm. Well, then why not tell me about it? If there's anything I can do... There is, Julie, there is. Uh, come in here where we'll not be disturbed. Hmm? under the impression that we are rich. Is that right? Well, of course, Papa. Everyone knows that. Mm -hmm. There are those who begin to doubt it. Why would that worry me? There are always people who say bad things about others. Well, unfortunately, in our case, those things are not only bad, they are true. As a matter of fact, dear, we are bankrupt. Poor Papa. I have tried to keep this from you, dear. I wanted you to have everything that money could buy. My whole life and your mother's has been devoted to making you happy. I've always been happy, even now. Mm. Even now, your happiness is going out the front door with the men who are carrying away the furniture. Your friends will help you. Mm. My friends have become my creditors, dear. Oh, don't worry, Papa. Godot will come back with more money than we've ever dreamed of. No, no, my partner will never come back. I have always said that he would, but I never believed it myself. You mustn't lose faith, Papa. I'm sure there's something we can do. There is something you can do, Julie. Me? Your mother and I will miss you. You really ought to get married, Julie. Of course, Papa. Why didn't I think of it myself? Oh, what a burden I must have been to you and Mama. How soon, Papa? How soon? Well, <laughs> Well, you talk as though you've already thought about the idea. Oh, I've been thinking about it ever since I first saw him. Well, well, that is wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> I thought perhaps that you would object because he was uh, a little bit older than you. Why, isn't the man supposed to be older? Well, uh, uh, yes, of course. You've spoken to him. Spoken to him. Why, we're holding a reception here at 12 o'clock to announce the engagement. Oh, Papa! Oh. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir. Yeah. What is this you stand? The Count will be here at noon, sir. Ah, excellent. And did you reach my creditors? Oh, indeed I did, sir. I brought one of them with me. Huh? Monsieur Goulard. He's Goulard? in the study. Oh, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> Is something funny, Josiah? Uh, well, it's his um, new false teeth, sir. He, he can't speak. Ah, oh, oh, it was an American invention. I read about that. <laughs> Very mad. Uh, well, I will tame the beast. Uh, I go to the lion's den. Huh. Ah, my friend. Well, how wonderful you look. I suppose you asked me here to pay me. And it's about time. Uh, sit down, sit down. Is this something new that I have not noticed before? Uh -huh. Oh, no, you don't. I'm not leaving here till I get my money. Mm. And you will not leave here until I get some money from you. What? I just like to... Mm. You are the man, Gula, who has been chasing me as if I were a hare. Now, admit it, you have been behaving badly. 
Anyone but me would have long ago stopped thinking kindly toward you. But of course, I could have caused you to lose a considerable sum of money. Right, that's it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You hesitate, huh? Because your conscience puzzles you. No, my teeth. <laughs> well, your teeth and your conscience. I received your note. And so you choose this time to have me put in prison. All right? There goes your investment in me, with interest. For I am about to marry my daughter to a man of great wealth. And you really have this marriage arranged? Uh, to a nobleman who possesses 100,000 francs for each finger on his hand. Yeah, both hands. Each finger? Yeah, and the thumbs included. He has one of the wealthy estates in all of France. Hmm. Well, I'll speak to the others about giving you a little more time. I gotta go now. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. What is it, Justin? The merchants are in the kitchen demanding their money. Now, you see? I do not need time, I need money. I need money to buy food. Food? Yes, yes, to pay for my reception for my rich son-in-law. Goulard, I need 500 francs. Never. Never! What is the matter with you, Goulard? You, a man of intelligence, ability, a strong man, far-sighted, and yet you cause me all of this trouble. You came here and I felt absolutely enraged against you, and now I know I was right. For at this moment, you have lost the best friend you ever had in your life. You are not worth the great sacrifice I am about to bring. I marry my one and only daughter to a rich man so that I can die with my conscience clear and say to myself in my grave, my friend's confidence in me has been justified. I have paid back every sou, <laughs> but not anymore. All right? Don't pay me the 500 francs. Send me to prison. I will at least have the satisfaction in knowing that you have lost everything. <laughs> Seven hundred francs. Well, that's very generous of you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, but this is only five hundred. I took the trouble to add the interest. Oh. Well, I will add this to the amount which you will never... <coughs> which you will eventually get. Thank you. Yeah. <coughs> Goodbye. Yeah, oh, oh uh, that is not all, my friend. You will have to lend us your silver for the reception at 12 o'clock, to which you and your good wife are naturally invited. All right, but I'll watch the silver very carefully, every piece. Piece. <laughs> the lion becomes a lamb. <laughs> the taming of a creditor. Mm. Well, Justin, how was I? Obviously a great performance, sir. Well, not great, Justin, but effective. <laughs> Only 500. Well, that's better than nothing. Yeah. Uh, you have reached my other creditors? I tried, but all I could find was Monsieur Goulard. Ah, well, never mind. Yeah, he will spread the news of Julie's marriage. Yeah, but to make sure, I think you had better try the cafes. The others are waiting in the kitchen. Ah, good. <laughs> Running for 
prize. You will win. <laughs> Trying to cheat me? It's 1852. Chateau Neuf du Pape. Uh, taste it. Maybe it's 1859. Mm -hmm. I do not like any man who takes advantage of another. <clears throat> Have the bills all been checked? Everyone, sir. Well, then why don't you pay them? Mark my word, honesty always pays. Having a good time, eh? Uh, you must excuse our inefficiency this morning, sir. Monsieur, this is not a part of my job. I deserve a raise. Well, you've got your raise. Thank you, monsieur. Uh, it doesn't make any difference how much you don't pay her. <laughs> I want to speak to you, father. Yeah, uh, later, my dear. Have you sent word to Monsieur Louis about the dresses? Yes, he will deliver them personally. Ah, that's very nice of him. To make certain he gets paid. I must speak to your father. Later, later, dear, later. I must get dressed for the reception. There will be no reception. Yeah. Huh? No reception? Julie! Julie? What is all this nonsense? You want the reception for the Count de la Brise. Oh, to announce your engagement. Is that not what you agreed? I agreed to get married, but certainly not for that creature, Papa. Well, uh, that so-called creature happens to be enormously wealthy. I don't understand. She could be a countess, but she has her heart set on another man. He can keep his title and his money. All I want is Jacques. You, Jacques? You, who is Jacques? You'll love him, Papa. A bank clerk, you. Jacques Menard. Oh, no. Oh. You love the bank clerk? Yes, Papa. Oh. And I suppose he loves you? Yes, Papa. Uh -huh. Poor innocent Julie. <laughs> you are too young to know what love means. A clerk who counts other people's money doesn't know how to love. He hasn't time for it. We'll find time to love each other, Papa. We'll live in a flat if we have to, and I'll do all the cooking. Oh, she'll do all the cooking. Oh, oh. Mm. <sighs> she could be a countess, and she'd rather be a cook. Our little home will be so neat and pretty, and no one will notice how poor we are. Except your husband. Tell me, Julie, does this Jacques Minard believe that we are wealthy? Well, yes, he does, but Ah, that's... I understand. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what is it, Justin? I've spread the good word among several of your uh, bankers, monsieur. Good. And monsieur Louis is waiting in the foyer. Uh, tell him I will see him shortly. Yeah. Wait a minute, wait, wait. Where does this Jacques Minard work? At the house of Rothschild. Go to the house of Rothschild. Tell Jacques Minard, Jacques Minard, that I would like to see him immediately. Oh, Papa, you're so wonderful. That's all right. You can thank me after this fortune hunter finds out that you are bankrupt and gives you up. You're so wrong, Papa. Mm. He loves me. He does. Mark my word. He only pretends to love you for your father's money. Like I am to pretend to love the Count de la Brie for his money? Yes. No, no. That is the... Uh, Different situation entirely. Ah, Monsieur Louis. Monsieur Mercadet. Mm -hmm. What have we here? Oh, oh, no, you don't. Not one item, not even a lace friend, until the whole bill is paid. Monsieur Louis, answer me one question. It's pleasure, monsieur. What is more important, fame or money? Uh, money. <laughs> girl, girl. Now, Louis. I won't uh, listen. I won't listen. 
reception. Do you mean there, there won't be a marriage? Oh, there will be a marriage to a bank clerk. A bank clerk? He gets 2,000 francs a year, but he is handsome. Handsome? Money. Money. Uh, oh, yes, sir, Louis and Monsieur Pequin. Delighted, Monsieur. How do you do? What about the bill? I'm afraid you will have to take back everything, Louis. Take everything back? Take everything back? But, Monsieur, these dresses were tailored especially for Madame and Mademoiselle. They're masterpieces. Millions of little stitches. You're breaking his heart. I am sorry, but the girls will have to restitch them for someone else. Millions of little stitches. Wait. Mercury, haven't I always been your friend? Even more than that. I'm like a relative, a kind uncle. Yes, 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 you have, yes. And believe me when I say you are making a mistake. A mistake? It's your responsibility to see that Julie marries this rich man. A rich man? You want your only daughter to live in poverty? No. And you must go ahead with this reception. Yes. Send up the clothes, so the ladies can get ready. Uh, monsieur? Well, uh, just the dresses then. Oh, monsieur. Uh, what about the lingerie? It is part of the ensemble. Of course, some pretty petticoats. You think so? Why, certainly. What's a woman without a pretty lingerie? Uh, not. All right, if you say so. Oh, merci, monsieur. Hats. Silk stockings, gloves, ribbons, and last but not least, the bill. You will find it very reasonable. Very reasonable, Mercury. Uh -huh. Very reasonable, you say? Yeah. <coughs> then you pay it. What? I am sorry, but I am just short of cash, my dear uncle. But this is a lot of money. But you said it's very reasonable. But why should I pay? Perhaps you had better send the dresses back, Louis. Oh, Wait. millions of little stitches. Tell your girls Wait. to... Wait. I'll pay. Oh. Unfortunately, I have only 100 francs with me. Oh, that's, that's all? all. That's all. I thought it's safer to come here with very little money. But don't you worry. I'll go and get you the rest. Uh, we'll take that on account, Monsieur Pequin. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Maybe the bluff. Monsieur Mac... Monsieur Marcadet! Oh, my dresses! Monsieur Marcadet! Marcadet! Yes, yes, yes. Here you are. I have had enough of everything. Oh, my friend, have you not had a good time? Good time? I haven't done my duty. I haven't got the breakfast. The only thing I got is this. Ah, what happened to you? A bee stung me. Very funny kind oh, of I'm bee. I'm so sorry, was. my friend. I will, I will miss it for you. Yeah, Marie. Henry! Henry. Here! Marie Louise! Henry! Here! Marie! What have you done with my men? What have you done with my girls? I roasted them for the reception. Outrageous scandal! <laughs> girls! Girls! Don't you realize that you are here representing the government? If things like this go on, the empire is sure to fall. Never mind the government. What my stitches? Go back to work! Upstairs! Oh, what now? Good news, monsieur. Not a credit at this uh, time. Uh -huh. Monsieur Mina will be right over. Mina? Oh, 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 the one man we don't need and he'll be right over. Oh, wonderful. See? I told you monsieur would find a way. No silver, and if the men come for the furniture, no tables and chairs. Instead of paying the merchants for this, they could have given us the money on our back wages. See who it is, Teresa. Oh, oh, that old miser. Don't open the door. Maybe he'll go away. Oh, let him in. Excuse me. I have a terrible cold. Perhaps you have a, a little soup for a hungry man. Help yourself. Thank 
careful, it's hot. Oh, I can see. Thank you. <laughs> Would you please ask your master if he can give me half a minute? Oh, I can see, I can see Miss, Mr. Mercader is having a, a, a big luncheon today. No, I'm just preparing a tidbit for the butler. <laughs> it's very funny. Oh, all this is for the butler. Is it true that Mademoiselle Julie is going to marry a count? You know as well as I do. A rich count? Not half as rich as you. Virginie, that is no way to talk to a man suffering from such a cold. Uh, ah, Violet, you and I are the most unfortunate men in all of France. How right you are, Mercadet. Mm. How right you are. Want, actual want, compelled me to be here today. I don't ask. I beg of you for the sake of a starving family. <laughs> Small payment on your loan. Oh, don't, don't, Violet. You are breaking my heart. Oh, what's the good of it? You see, I, I hate to trouble you, but, but my wife, the children, Suzanne, Francois, Géraldine, Jacqueline, Marie, Antoinette, Pierre, they're all waiting for my return with such anxiety. Yes, 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 I know. Well, now I have a hundred francs. I will give you half. Oh, uh, it's been so long since I haven't seen so much. My family will bless you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Well, you have quite a cold, haven't you? Look at your eyes. Every time I see you, Violet, your misfortunes touch me to the quick. And to think, to think only yesterday, I was on the verge of paying you back everything I owe you. Everything? Mm -hmm. Did you say everything? I came within a hair's breadth. No. Yes, an amazing discovery. And to think that stupid banker would only allow me 3,000 francs when there's a full million in it. A million? Mm, yes, that is just to start. Of course, once it isn't launched, there is no telling how violent... <coughs> The cold breaker will be. Cold breaker? Oh, it's an amazing drug. Cures the common cold almost instantly. No. Yes. Violet, there are a billion people in the world. Each person gets a cold at least once a year. At two francs a bottle, that is two billion francs a year. How, how much does it cost to make one bottle? Only one franc. That would be a profit of... Let's sell it for three francs. That would be a profit of two billion francs. Mm. We'll be the richest man in France, in the world. Oh, well, I don't care for the money. You know, it's philanthropic. <laughs> the Count who is to marry my daughter is so rich that money to me is of no importance. <laughs> but imagine that stupid banker refused me 4,000 francs to put it on the market. Well, well you just said three. Oh, oh 4,000 and not a sou more. Mm. And I offered him half the profit. <laughs> oh, my, my, my. Would you like to... Would you like me to give you some of that amazing discovery for your Me? Oh, no, 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 no charge, no charge. No, oh, no, thank you. Ah. Some hot water, please, Terry. Excellent. 
little introduction. <laughs> Well, did I tell you too much? <laughs> no. I, I, I actually don't know. Ah, you see there, he is cured already. Oh, <laughs> no. And the other ingredients? Oh, now, Violet, would you extract a secret from me? Now, not a word of this to anyone until Pierquin returns with the cash. Pierquin? Huh? Miser. Oh, 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 lucky Pierquin. A fortune for only 5,000 francs. You just said four. No, I would refuse four, but the business needs five. Oh, oh wait a minute. Leave it to me. I'll, I'll raise the money. Uh, save yourself the trouble. Pierre Can will be here immediately. Pierre Can is here, dear. Ah, uh, yes, I know. I thank you. I'll see him shortly. But he brought the money for uh, it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, well, I suppose I will have to see him. Uh, goodbye, Violet. Oh, wait a minute, Mercury. Uh, I have the money. I have the money. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and I'd better close the dealer right now. Uh -huh. You carry all this money in your pocketbook. Oh, uh, a friend of mine asked me to find an investment. Mm. I will expect you and your good wife at the reception at 12 o'clock. Uh, Ah, uh, poor Pekka, what you are doing to him. <laughs> See, Mackety, no time for delay. I have the money. I, uh, I will explain it to you. Make it a good story. Young man? Well, Monsieur Mercadet has sent for me. I am... Jacques Menard? Yes. Oh. Julie? Julie. Jacques. Julie, take the young man into the study. As soon as your father is free, we will join you. Come, Jacques. The place is busier than the bank. Oh, Jacques, don't let me marry him. What are you talking about? The Count de la Brie. They're getting ready now for the reception. Count de la Brie? Reception? Well, now it's my engagement. But you're going to marry another man, not me? But you can't love him. Well, you know I love only you, and I won't marry him. Merci, monsieur. Et je suis bien. The ladies will be. Credit. Of course, your credit is good forever. His credit. <laughs> credit. Uh, I pay cash. <laughs> your job, uh, uh, just in case. You and Madame will come to the reception at 12 o'clock. Eh? Yes, uh, uh, Justin, bring my clothes into the study, please. Edgar? One, two. <laughs> Manners, my good man, kissing my daughter on the day of her betrothal. But it's not unusual for a, a man girl he loves. Uh huh. So you really love her, huh? Yes, sir. Well, you have convinced her. Now perhaps you will have to convince me. <coughs> Julie, you and uh, your mother had better start dressing now, huh? I Justin is bringing my clothes down here. But Papa. <laughs> no, Papa, me. This young fellow and I wish to have a man-to-man -man talk. Is that not your wish, my boy? Yes, sir. Uh huh? You see, he wishes to speak with me privately. Now run along now. Well, Jacques, <clears throat> what is on your mind? You sent for me, sir. Oh, did I? Oh, yes, 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 so I did, so I did. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I will get to the point. Young man, I am a financial wreck. I am penniless, worse than penniless. Worse than penniless? Yes. How can that be? Well, summons, look here, judgments, sheriff's orders, stamps, but... Mr. Mercury, I always thought that... I knew what you thought. Would you like to see some of my unpaid bills? Look at those unpaid bills. Look at them. Look at them. And look here. Look at the stamps. You see stamps? I'll show you some more. You see stamps there? <laughs> stamps there? You see? Mercury, this is hard to believe. Huh? 
Now, what have you to say? Well, I, I want to thank you for your frankness. Mm. I spoke in my interest, not in yours. Mm. Nonetheless, you opened my eyes. Mm. I knew I would. <clears throat> when I thought that you were, you were rich, why, I was afraid to ask you for your permission for our marriage. Now, well, now I all the more want to marry your daughter. to marry my daughter? Oh, I certainly do. Oh, well, that is a horse with another tail. <laughs> Chaussin, tell Madame Mercadet and Julie I wish to speak with them at once. <clears throat> well, I had the wrong opinion of you, my boy. Come with me. Pauline, Julie, I wish to speak with you. Hmm. Now look, young man. My daughter is young and beautiful now. She can become the mistress of a vast estate. In place of that, what have you to offer? Only love. Well, then let me appeal to that love, young man. Poverty will make her tired and old before her time. Give her a chance for a rich, exciting life. But Julie knows I have no money and still she loves me. Well, then she shall marry you. Ah. And once a month, you will bring her to visit me in prison. In prison? What are my declining years in a cell compared to my daughter's happiness? But, uh, is there anything I can do, sir? Marry Julie and bury me in a pauper's grave. Oh, no. She's, she'd never forgive me. Well, there is nothing we can do about it. So long as she still loves you, she would turn down the count anyway. Oh, this has been quite a shock in my old age. I... I suppose then that the only thing I can do is... refuse your permission to marry Julie. Young man, you would do that for me? No, no, not for you, for Julie. I... She'll think I... I, I only cared for her for her money. She'll despise me. Ah, but in truth, Jacques, she would owe you all of her happiness. Jacques, is everything all right? Mademoiselle. Mademoiselle? Am I no longer Julie to you? Well, your father told me that, that we are bankrupt, absolutely bankrupt. Well, that doesn't matter to us, does it, Jacques? Does it, Jacques? I would be lying if I said that it, uh, it didn't have some uh, effect on my intentions. I don't believe you, Julie. The thought of poverty is somewhat depressing. Come, Mama. I think we should finish dressing before the Count gets here. You brute. I think I'll go now. Yeah, wait, wait, young man. Maybe I will have you for a son-in-law. All I need is time. An engagement doesn't always mean a marriage. Stick around, Jack. What about the bailiff, sir? The bailiff? Oh, I've forgotten about the... Oh, here, here, here. Give him his money. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Give him his money and tell him to bring back the furniture immediately. Are you the Count de la Brie? Well, it's could I be, young man. And, uh... What's your desire? I think I'd best suppress my desire. I hate aristocrats. How strange. I do love bourgeois. Under certain circumstances. Not sure. Thank you. Dear Khan, 
Doctor. Sir, well, I'm glad to see you. And my apologies to you, sir. Of all days, for the upholsterers to bring in the furniture. Perfectly all right. Well, well, come and sit down, sit down, sit Thank down. Thank you, sir. <coughs> Thank you. May I? Where do you want me to sit? Sit over there. Sit Thank over. you, sir. <coughs> uh, who uh, was that young man we just left here? Oh, oh, well, he was just another suitor for Mademoiselle Julie. <laughs> I, uh, poor boy, I'm afraid I was rather hard on him, but what could I do? He, he only has a 10,000 franc income. Oh, well, that wouldn't go very far. Oh, no, no, oh, certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the man to give a girl like Julie to the first suitor who comes along, or are you? Oh, no, indeed, no, no, no. I make no hasty moves when it comes to my one and only daughter. That is why I must ask you, my dear Comte, uh, if you are in love with my daughter seriously. No, passionately. Well, then, can you support her in the manner to equal that great passion? Oh, I know what you mean. Now, uh, my uh, estate uh, is uh, 23,288 acres, uh, 1,250,000. A uh, castle, another castle, another castle. A chateau in Flanders, uh, 250,500. Uh, some collections of uh, old masters, Rubens, Rembrandt, you know. Of course, they're priceless. Uh, and uh, there are some salt marshes that could yield enormous returns. Uh, shall I continue? Oh, no, 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 no. I have heard about those salt marshes, yes. But, uh, perhaps we could form up for their exploitation, hmm? Oh, a splendid idea, of course. Only men like uh, you could maneuver it successfully. Oh, thank you, thank you. Quite so, quite so. Now, uh, uh, not that it matters, my dear Count, but uh, have you any debts? Debts? I really, I really don't think so. I, in fact, I know I don't. Uh, there is nothing to... Oh, yes. There is a trifle mortgage of uh, 20,280... Pardon me, Monsieur Mercury, uh, 260 francs, to be exact. <laughs> oh, well, that's a mere pittance. <laughs> now, sir, I wonder <laughs> if you can... Oh, the extent of my daughter's fortune. Oh, no, 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 but I would have distrusted you if you had not asked me. I... Naturally, my daughter will inherit all of my fortune, and besides that, her mother will make her a present of her fortune, too. You, you know, my dear Paul, <laughs> I am beginning to like you already. You shall be my son-in-law. Papa. Son. Comte de my wife. Madame Mercade, your future son-in-law. Mama. Son. Will you excuse me a minute? Hmm? Claude. What is it? Julie's lying on her bed, crying her eyes out, and won't get dressed. Oh, uh, 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 I will be back in one second. the la <laughs> Well, well, well. I didn't expect you here. I, uh, didn't expect you. <laughs> if you have finished your work, my good man, you may leave. You have been paid, have you not? 
Yes, monsieur. As I told you before, my dear Count, you see, the upholsterers picked a fine day to bring back the furniture. Ah. It's no use, Mercadet. I know all about your furniture. And I can guess the rest. Oh, now, my dear sir, you are jumping to conclusions. Not when I see government stamps all over the place. Uh, well, that is, that is merely for auction purposes. I am refurnishing the house. I'm, uh, is that not so? I wish I could say so, monsieur, but the Count and I are old friends. You know the bailiff. Fact is, I'll be a guest in his house tomorrow. A little matter of 2,000 francs. I have been double-crossed. You've been double-crossed. I have been double-crossed. What about you? You told me that you had a mortgage on your estate of only 23,000 francs. And what about those vast salt marshes? Under the ocean. Uh, you Under the lead ocean. me to believe that you are a rich man? I took the liberty of uh, including your daughter's dowry among my assets. I. Uh, if you'll excuse me. No, wait, 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 wait. You must stay for the reception. I have invited my creditors. Who are these creditors? Always the same. Moulin, Violette, Pierquin. He didn't say Pierquin. Uh, uh, Justin. Monsieur, Madame Coulin. Ah, oh, Francois, Camille. Mm. Has the count arrived yet? Mm. Here's the silver for the luncheon. And remember, it's counted. Be very careful. It's imported Sheffield. Would you uh, go into the study and I shall join you immediately? Come, my love. I'm so sorry, my dear. Conte Lebris? Conte Lebris? Conte Lebris? You've invited him, Monsieur Pierre Quint. Oh, well, he is one of my creditors. I told him that I had arranged a brilliant marriage with a wealthy nobleman. Oh, this is horrible. I told him I had arranged a brilliant marriage with the daughter of a weak-minded millionaire. What? Pierre Quint is also a creditor of yours? Mm -hmm. you, well, then I am the weak-minded millionaire? Yes. Uh, no, I mean, it doesn't matter. It, it, you must understand. He, he must not find me here. Well, what about me? We must go through with this reception. If my other creditors find out about this, well, they will throw me into jail. You wait here. Wait, no, I have... Justin! Justin! Oh, oh. Justin, Pierre Cam must not come into this house as long as the Count is here. But I don't understand. He's been invited. How am I to... Uh... Yeah, I don't care how, but you keep him out of this house. And do not set a place for him at the table. Hmm? Very well, sir. Hmm. Yeah. Oh. Monsieur, Madame Violette. Ah, oh, my dear Violette. Madame? <laughs> Won't you come into the study? Mercadet, my dear Mercadet. Comte de Brive. Comte de Brive. What? Pierre Cain, is he here? No, no, he will not be here. I have given instructions. So we are safe. I'm so glad. Come sit down. Thank you, sir. I am sorry that I cannot offer you a drink, but under the circumstances, you understand. I understand. You have a cigar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are thinking the same thing I am. Uh, more or less. <laughs> You know, my dear Comte, despite my disappointment, I admire you. I must return the compliment, sir. You actually managed to be known as one of the wealthiest men of Paris. Now, uh, <clears throat> may I inquire, how do you operate? Well, <laughs> since we are sisters under the skin, I will tell you, buddy. All I use is a letter. Five years ago, my partner, Monsieur Gadot, stole all of my money. Oh, you would love him. <laughs> and two years later, he wrote me from America saying that he was sorry for what he had done, but he would come back sometime and pay me what he owed me, you see? But naturally, I did not believe it, and, but I began to build him up. I reported it, that he, he was in the California gold rush, and that he had struck a mine, and that he would come back someday, but he was retarded, and Oh, well, you understand. Oh, you a splendid job. I, I wish you could help me to do as well someday. <laughs> Maybe I will. <laughs> well, it was so nice meeting you. I think I'd I better go now. No, 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 no. 
No, you must stay and help me through the luncheon. No, I can't. We are having pheasant prepared by the finest cook in all of Paris. I'll stay. Ah, we must keep our little secret, hmm, son? Yes, Papa. Please be seated. Oh, my dear God. Somebody help him up, please. Oh, my dear God. I am so sorry, my dear. It's sir. perfectly all right. It's perfectly all right. Never have to be before. Thank you. Thank you. Judy, my dear. Oh, not first. Oh. Now, please. Monsieur Goulard. Monsieur Goulard. What is that happening? What happening? I hope everyone enjoys the present. Really? Isn't the silver wonderful? <laughs> the silver. Justin, you please. Thank you. There we are. I propose a toast to my daughter and my future son-in-law. Wasn't that the doorbell? I did not hear any bell. Did you come? Uh, 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 no, 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 indeed. I could have sworn I heard the doorbell. Do you see any more places, my dear? Um, were not Madame and Monsieur Perquin invited? Oh, yes, yes, they were invited. But uh, Madame Perquin sent word that she couldn't come because she was suffering from hay fever, you know? <coughs> Hello, Justin. Justin. Isn't that your name? Me, sir. Whom do you wish to see? Monsieur Mercadet, naturally. Mercadet? Sorry, I've never heard of him. Never heard of him? And who is paying your salary? Not Monsieur Mercadet, I can assure you. Are you sure we've come to the right house? Why, certainly I'm sure. How many times have I been here to lend him money? Lend money to Lord Dimsborough? And who may I ask is Lord Dimsborough? Only the richest banker in England. This happens to be his house. Well, then tell your Lord Dimsborough that the Monsieur and Madame Pierquin are here for the reception. I'll tell him the next time he comes to Paris. You see, he only uses this small house when Lady Dimsborough visits her French dressmaker. You see what a fool you've made of yourself, rushing me to get dressed, then not even knowing where you're going. This is some sort of trick. The only trick is knowing who lives where and when they are at home. Well, this is the most outrageous thing I've ever heard of. The first place you start me off all wrong. You don't even give me time to get dressed. I can't coiffure my hair. And then you drag me to this house, and this stupid man won't let us in. Oh. Who was it, Justin? A beggar, madam. A beggar? I gave him five francs and he went away. Oh, that was very thoughtful of you, Justin. It, uh, I thought you wouldn't want to be disturbed, so I took the liberty, monsieur. Uh, Justin, may I have some more wine, please? <clears throat> when the marriage is going to take place. I beg your pardon? When is the marriage going to take place? Very soon, very soon, I imagine. Oh. 
I would like to propose another toast. On behalf of my dear wife, Pauline, my daughter, Julie, it is a pleasure to welcome the Comte de la Brive into our family. He is a gentleman, a scholar, and an imposter. What did you call him? I said he's an imposter. <laughs> well, that's a lie. De la Brive is a count. Count. <laughs> a bankrupt count. If your master's the richest banker in England, perhaps he'll pay my husband what he owes him. Oh, my silver! My silver! My, my gold! My gold! <laughs> no wonder you wouldn't let me in. He owes me more than you do. Only this morning I... Oh, I promoted me for... It's very simple, gentlemen. You have been swindled. A title? Ah, he hasn't even the title to his own hat. Disgusting old man wanting to marry a young girl for her money. You have fooled us for the last time. Gentlemen, are we together? No more schemes. No more delays. No more mercy. Can you pay us? Today. No. This very afternoon. No. You cannot settle our account? I am afraid not. Did you hear that, gentlemen? He can't pay us. Goulart? You go to the debtor's prison and get the patrol wagon. And come back with the wagon immediately. Come in here. Let's go, darling. Oh. Come. Oh. Come, come. Oh. Oh. You all think of something, monsieur. I'm afraid, Justin, I am... This time, I am in plenty of trouble. Oh, Papa, if there were only something I could do. No, Julie, you have done enough already. At least you will be happy now. Hmm? Not when I've lost Jacques. Julie, you must go after your young man. He was not interested in your money. Hmm? He gave you up because I convinced him that you would be happier that way. Oh, Papa! I'm sorry, Pauline. Now, you will please leave me alone. I, I would like to think. Seems he is coming back. He is? Uh, not he. You. Me? Posing as Gadot. Oh. You see, if my creditors think that you are Gadot. But your creditors know me. And they certainly must know what Gadot looks like. Yes, but they will not see you closely. You will rent a big coat, you see, with a big collar and put it up around your face. Hmm. And you will look very tired from such a long trip. Huh? Now, how long can you put them off? Long enough to convince them that I have a fortune in cash. And that will enable me to pay off all of my debts. Pay off your debts, too. You will do that? Yes. Then I'll do it. Ah, good, good. Now, <laughs> now you will rent a carriage, you see. Mm -hmm. And you will cover it with dirt and mud. You have come all the way from Calais. Yeah, uh, but uh, uh, will this be enough? Yes. Oh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. You, oh, and wait, wait, wait. You... Uh, take this money chest with you. It'll make it look better. Huh? But you want me to be back before they arrest you? Oh, naturally. Yes, yes, yes. Now, you go out of the house so no one can see you. You come back the same way. You come into the study and shut the door. Huh? You are a good fellow. Uh, Godot. Godot. <laughs> I can trust you, huh? You know me. Mm. Count. Please, madame, I'm in a hurry. Excuse me. Please don't do it. Madame, your husband might end up in prison. It might be better for his sake. Well, then, for my sake, let me leave. Oh.
Claude. Oh, Pauline. How long is this pretense, this fraud, going to last? Darling. Many times before we've been in trouble, and you always found a way. But this time, I'm worried. I'm afraid. What are we going to do, Claude? What? Well, now, you leave it to me. Everything is going to be all right. You just wish me luck, hmm? If I could only do a little more than just wish you luck. Before I arrest this man, I have to inform you that you have to pay for his food and care as long as he's in prison. How much? Eighty centimes a day. For heaven's sake. We would pay him 95 centimes to get him where he belongs. You're right. Let's go. back in Paris. I gave him 5,000 today. <laughs> in cash? Where is he? We have the police this time. Yeah. Mr. Mercadet will receive you in the living room. So, you have really decided to go through with this? Yes, we have. See for yourself. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. The decision seems to be unanimous. Have you a warrant for my arrest? Are you Claude McAdee? Mm -hmm. If you don't pay these gentlemen 430,000 francs... And 25 centimes. And 25 centimes, I'll have to take you to the debtor's prison. Can you pay it? Today? No. They're arresting father! Oh, Jacques, do something. I couldn't live through the day. Don't you worry, I'll handle this. Well, I never thought that my friends... Please, Papa, don't waste your breath on these horrible creatures. They're not worth it. I promise you, sir, I'll pay back every one of them if I have to work 23 hours a day. Hmm? One hour for sleep. <laughs> well, no thank you, son. I prefer the nice, quiet cell rather than be hounded by these men any longer. By day, I will read Balzac, and by night, I will be laughing to myself. <laughs> Even now, as I think that they should pick this day of all days to have me arrested. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> Something is in the wind. Something up? I insist upon being put behind bars now. That will allow me to pay my debt to all of society and to all of you. And then when you have found out that he has returned... Who has returned? Who? <laughs> Uh, nobody. <clears throat> Goodbye, Julie. Papa. Jack. I am ready, officer. Has Godot come back to Paris? Oh, I know. Your partner has come back and you don't want to tell her. That's it. He has got his fortune back and doesn't want to pay us. Gentlemen, I give you my word, I do not expect Godot today. Well, then it'll be tomorrow. Tomorrow? Another one of your tricks. I wouldn't be surprised a bit. Swindler! Yeah. He's lying well, again. Sure he is. <laughs> Monsieur Mercadet, Monsieur Cardot is back. <laughs> All right, gentlemen, you have me. I didn't want to tell you until I had tested your friendship. Oh, I knew it all the time. You? It was you who sent for the wagon. Oh, that was a misunderstanding. Officer, uh, take it away. Officer! Oh, you, you, whatever, dear friend, arrested. Oh, my best friend. You should be ashamed of yourself. You Bill. I've taken Monsieur Godot to the guest room. He's here, Claude. He's back. Now you can pay your debt. Now you needn't go to prison. Everything will be all right now, Papa. Everything. Yeah, fine, fine. But don't overdo it. How wonderful. I'm so happy for you. And I'm the happiest. Now, wait a moment. I would like to see the so-called Monsieur Goudot. <clears throat> well, what is the matter, Pierre Can? Do you not trust me? 
Uh, we just want to pay our respects to him. Well, you heard what my wife said? Yes, I heard it very clearly. But I demand proof. Proof! 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 proof. Get out. Wait, 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 wait. All right, gentlemen, you win. <laughs> For years I have been telling you fairy tales and you have believed them. And now, just because a carriage arrived, you think Godot was in it. <laughs> You're fools. The only one who knew it was ridiculous was I, Mercadet. Yeah, Godot spoke with my wife. Yeah. yeah, she's a good actress. I will show you your Godot. You know who Godot is? Oh, <laughs> he is our Count. Count, please come out and show these gentlemen your face. Hmm? Hmm? No, no, darling. Godot is really back. Really. Ah, how wonderful. <laughs> But Godot is really back. Yes, Papa. Here he does, please. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. I'm sorry, Mercedes. You fools, you. Uh, you see, I could have told you anything, and you would have believed me. I knew Godot was back, but I just wanted to see what kind of men you really were. And I saw it in your face. You, Becca, and you, Goulard, and you, Violet. <laughs> but I recognized the good people, my dear wife. Uh, Jacques, uh, and Julie, my daughter, and you, Justin, and you, my greedy friends. When I was rich, you came running and pleading to me for favor when you needed help, but now when I need help, you wanted to send me to prison. Only Goulard was his idea. All of you, tomorrow you will get your money back. You will be paid in full. And now do me one favor. Anything. Get out. I don't ever want to see your faces again. Get out, Justin, show them the door. I knew it all. You couldn't fool us. I never doubted you. <laughs> you see, <laughs> Godot worked again. <laughs> but only until tomorrow when I will have to start in all over again. <laughs> but you won't have to. Oh, why not? Because Godot is back and he has the money for you. Oh, uh, no, Pauline, no, no. Go in and see for yourself, Papa. No. Go on. Go on. going to be partners again. Everything is going to be all right again. Happiness, prosperity. Uh, I'm afraid you have to excuse me. Yeah, no, no, wait, 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 Count. No, 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 Count, wait. You stay with us, huh? You may be a swindler, <laughs> but you have a good heart. Sir. You know what I'm going to do for you? I am going to lend you some money to put you back on your feet again. No, no, sir, I'm, I'm deeply touched. I, I must refuse, mm -hmm. but I take it. Yeah. <laughs> you know why I'm doing this? Not only because I like you, but because my dream has come true. Today, I am a creditor. Does anybody need any money? Hmm? Hmm? <laughs> 